And welcome back, everyone, to Macalite Shards of Amber. This is episode seven. Um, before we get started, we want to do a little special um, shout out to our friend Shannon here. It is her birthday. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so from us to you, Shannon, we are going to sing happy birthday on stream. Oh God. Live, just to watch you get uncomfortable. You say that now. Oh. So, <laughs> one, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Shannon. <laughs> happy birthday to you. you. Wow. <laughs> that was horrible. It was terrible. It. Yes, absolutely awful. <laughs> Well, happy birthday, Shannon. Glad you yes. are glad happy you are here on your birthday playing some D&D. &D. Uh, how else is I going to spend it? Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> so where we left off last time for the careful and discerning viewers at home to channel my inner Sean O'Hara, um, the party was in the midst of a fight with young Fen or Janik. Um, in the streets of Marsember, where he has raised undead all over the place. Uh, our beloved Mia, everyone's favorite server at the Tankard of Eels, has fallen in a force cage with two skeletons uh, put there by, by young Fen. Um, Avion, in a fit of rage, has moved as quickly as she can to, to Janik young Fen. And the other party members are also making their way to Janik as quickly as they can. So, it is here that we pick back up. That was weird, sorry. <laughs> it's alright. So let me jump to the battle map, because that's where we're going to be going. And away we go. So, down here at the bottom of the screen, you'll see... Um, little icon that for the viewers at home is Janik aka Young Fen. Um, Avion is right next to him and it's a big map so it's I'm gonna move her, move it around a little bit to make sure everybody can see everything but uh, Quill has been um, wild shaped into a direwolf. Uh, Osil is near him and you can't quite see it because of the chat window but Nero and um, Bala aka Buya have uh, they're also on the screen. They are still here. Um, I will say right now at this point, um, Nero has gotten close to to Bala and said, "I think it's best if we go get help. I know some people that can that can that can help us with this. Let's let's go back. We have the contacts. You go to yours. I'll go to mine. We can make some things happen." And you see them head out, and on the way out, they're like taking out zombies and um, uh, skeletons on their way. So, with that, you guys, there is Janik, a.k.a. Young Fen. Let me pull up initiative, and we'll start back there. Let's reroll initiative just for the sake of fun. So, go ahead and click on your tokens, and let's do this all over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled the exact same, same thing. thing. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Nice. All right. It's your birthday. You go first. <laughs> so yeah, I am gonna do that. Let me switch those around. There we go. So let me get this organized for the people at home so they can see without it interfering too much with the game. So behind the chat window is the force cage, and I'll just leave that there. All right. So, Avion, it is your turn. All right. I'm going to move right up in Janik's face and scream. You're, I'm going to make you wish you were dead and just whack at him with the quarterstaff. All right. 
15. Let me check him out real quick. That does hit. Go ahead and five damage. Okay. You do five damage. So he's he's too busy looking out over the battlefield and you kind of come up and crack and kind of catch him in the back and, and he and he shouts, ah! And he turns and looks at you and he just starts laughing in that little that little kid's voice. <laughs> and it's creepy as all hell. All right, Quill. I'm going to move as close as I can to him. One, two. At full movement. And I know that I'm going to probably get attacked by both these zombies with an opportunity going past them. But I'll take double movement to just be on him. Okay. So, yeah, let me uh, just pop this open real quick here. Get, get all our baddies, get all our baddies going here. So yeah, that's, uh, yeah, you had a zomp, it was a skeleton next to you. So let me pull that dude open. Okie doke, yeah, you are gonna take an attack of opportunity from the short sword with him. Yep, pretty sure 24, that's a crit, um, <laughs> but it's, it's, yeah. only, it's only five damage. Okay. So as you're running away, it just slices back and kind of catches you on the tail and like skins just the slightest bit of hair off the, uh, off the, off, off your tail. Good. Making you a little mad there. Okay. So you're, yeah, you're able to use your, your movement and you're able to get to him. Perfect. That's all I can do on mine. Okay. All right. So that brings us to, let me roll initiative for him real quick here. Be a four, be a four. <laughs> Just to make sure we get in the right order. So yeah, it is now uh, his turn. Okay, so on his turn, after getting cracked by you, uh, Avion, he he turns and he and he and he gives you that smirk, that 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 little half curl of a. Uh, um, smile right there at the corner of his mouth and he says <laughs> try to catch me if you can and he disappears <laughs> and he pops up back over here right next to the force cage And there's like two uh, two peasants, or not peasants, but like commoners, and they're they're freaked out and they're trying to run away, and and he's just kind of smiling at them. So he pops up over there, um, and he and he and he, and you can still see from there that that just that smirk, and he's <laughs> and Osel, that brings us to you. All right, well, let's go ahead and. I'll take it. I'm gonna take an attack opportunity. I'm gonna move up to, to Janik. Right. Uh, so I'll move right there. So Next, you, I you take from that one. I'm pretty sure 21 hits you. Yeah, yeah. it does. Three damage from that skeleton. Um, Ow. Yep. So you're able to get up to. You're able to get up to Janik. All right, and I will glaive him in the face. Go for it. So the yes. 22 hit. 22 does hit. For 8 damage. Yep. So and yeah. I will use my extra act, my extra attack to attack him again. Okay. So butt end of oh, the blade. Yeah, we have and that. a 6 does not hit. No, a six. <laughs> and if you want to use your bonus action, you did take Polar Master, so you could use the butt end, or you could still cast um, a smite or anything like that. And the smite, would you could use the smite right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll use the smite. Because your first attack did hit. Yeah, uh, let's go with Searing Smite, I guess. Okay. DC 14 con save. Makes Ain't it. That. So All right. Half damage on that. Uh, so, yeah. So, that's nine damage. So, he takes, he takes uh, we'll call it five. He takes five, five damage, some of which is fire. So that's enjoyable for him. 
<laughs> All right. And at this point, after you hit him, um, Avion and Quill, both of you roll me perception checks. Yeah, so Avion, you can't, you're, you're more focused on, on Janik, you're, you're kind of looking that way, but Quill, as you've run up in that direction, you're kind of looking down that corridor, and as you do, you see, um, you see a kobold approaching, and next to that kobold <laughs> is Delthrin. Let me bring them into the fight now. So both of them, both of them roll up, um, you see them rolling up, and Delthrin... Like, you haven't quite seen him look this way before. He looks like he's a young man. Not physically, like, not the way he appears, but the way he's moving. He's moving with the age of someone who's, like, you know, maybe in their 30s. He's got complete focus, and you can just sense, like, even as far away as you are, how pissed off he is. And Good. next next to him is this is this little kobold like struggling to keep up <laughs> like every step that Delthrin takes, Yip Yap's having to take like three. Let me uh, if you want to jump into the initiative there, Chris. All right. Side note, Chris, welcome back. Yes, Thank you. welcome. Good to be back. Yes. Hell yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay. That'll work. So let me bump you yeah, where you are. You're fine there. Okay. Well, it wasn't a five. <laughs> okay. So, and I'll say for the for the sake of, of things, you guys constantly like while they were doing that, you've you've moved up. Um, as as you guys have moved up, yip yap, you notice like there are still a ton of zombies and skeletons and undead around everywhere in the city, popping up like fighting commoners and and nobles and townspeople and everyone that Delthrin walks past like he's almost just like snapping his fingers and they're stopping attacking the other people and they just kind of like hang out and they they almost start following him um it's it's almost as if he's taking control of them uh so you start you start rolling up and yeah you're getting closer and closer and closer. Uh, you've you've made it to about you're right at the foot of this bridge here, um, right there, and you can just see uh, Quill and, and Avion and yeah you start rolling up. Uh, with that, Avion, it is your turn. All right, I'm gonna assume levitate is still in effect because it lasts for like ten minutes, I think. Yeah, but you you wouldn't have been able to move around as easily as you have um, because with Levitate, you're up. And if you've gotten that push, you can continue in that line, but you can't like mm -hmm. change direction. You'd have to have an outside force change your direction. Right, so right. So I, I assume that you had dropped it as soon as um, you had gotten to the front of the tanker of eels. Okay, all right. So let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm going to Can I move past um these zombies that are to the left of me without getting an attack or are they still under Janik's control? They're still under his control, but if you wanted to like you could hop down this rock here and kind of make your way across this way. All right. And let's up. see. Um I'll just say it's going to cost you an extra five feet of movement to do it that way. That's fine. I have like 40 feet, so I can probably get like right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take two crossbow shots at Janik. Okay. Fire away. All right, that's one. That hits. That hits. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Both of those hit. So as he's, he's over there, um, kind of... Taken, taken a hit from from Osel. He's not really paying attention, and you poof, hand crossbow reload. Poof, the second one catches him like right in the back of the neck. Um, just two bolts, one in the shoulder, one in the back of the neck. So yeah, that's nice. That's uh, 15 damage total. Wow. And you just hear like the shriek of a child. Ah! And then it goes back to that laugh. Just. <laughs> Alright. 
Quill, you are up. Um, I'm going to follow right behind her and do again double movement to get up to him. Okay. So you won't be able to attack, but that's your, I know. Uh, you can you can you can get there for sure. Uh, I got enough movement to actually even get. I'm going to say I'd try to go. Uh, on this side of him, trying to block him. Trying to block him from what? From going, like north of there, okay. like to the uh, right next to so the cube. So you can't you can't get there because that's the force cage. Oh shit! That little yeah. You, I'm you sorry. Can't, you can't get into it. The closest you could get would be. Let's see. So you were here. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 20, 20. You could get like right here. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is his turn. And he is going to, let's see here. Yeah, he's going to, he looks at you, Osel, and he kind of stares you directly in the eyes. And it's kind of disconcerting for you. This, like, you're in the middle of this battle, and all of a sudden he stops and he looks up at you and he stares and he looks into your eyes, and you feel, you feel this really weird sensation inside your body. It feels like something is effectively invading you. Um, your, you, you feel like your consciousness is is kind of being taken over. Uh, I need you to roll a Constitution saving throw, please. Uh oh. So, suddenly, like, you start to feel this other consciousness, and, like, who you are as Osel starts to fade away, and you sense the presence of Janik coming into you. Um, and as that starts to happen, just as you're, like, on the cusp of losing control, a familiar voice comes into your head and says... You must resist. You must fight back. Hear me. You have more purpose than this. I am here to help you. Do your good deeds. Redeem yourself. Now fight. And with that, you slam right back into your body. He's pushed out. And as you look at him, he looks very surprised. Like... I thought I had that. Okay. So, yip yap. It is your turn. All right. So, uh, my my new buddy Delthrin. When does when does he go? Um, he's going to go. Actually, he's going to go right after you. He's going to go right after me. Of course, he is. All right. So I'm going to move, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to double my movement too. I think. All right. 30, 45, 50, 55, so I can go 60. I should be able to go right to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. And I'm going to go to there. Okay. And that is all I have got. Okie doke. So with that... It's going to be... I'm just going to have him follow you for the sake of this. So with that, you see him move up a little bit. Comes over here. This skeleton here, um, this one here for the folks at home, stops attacking this person and just kind of stands there at, at wait. And you see him and he looks at, he looks at young Fen across and, and or Janik. I'll use their names interchangeably. And Janik sees him, and you can just see, like, the animosity between them grow. Um, there's just utter hatred and disdain coming out of Delthrin's face and eyes. Um, and you just see Delthrin, like, raise his hands up, and I need everyone to... Ro ah, screw it. You all see it. It's just awesome as hell. Um, you see two zombie ogres, one on each side suddenly appear um these things are huge like absolutely massive things but they're not quite like regular zombie ogres they've look like they've kind of had 
a little bit of tweak, um, kind of what you guys saw in some of his drawings. Like they've got an extra set of arms. Um, they're just kind of pieced together to be a little bit more, a little bit more badass than um, a, a, a typical zombie ogre would be. As Super as cool. Zombie ogre is. Nice. And they start making their way in. Like they start walking by. Um, there's one up here at the top. Let me move this over. It pops up up here for the folks at home. Um, and it just walks by and there's two like city guardmen fighting a, a zombie and a skeleton and it just like picks one of the skeletons up and just crushes it throws its bones down grabs the zombie just squishes its head in its hand and it explodes and like a shower of gross bodily flesh just covers the two city guardsmen and they're just kind of like they aren't quite sure if they should attack it or not and it just keeps it just keeps walking past them um the one down here makes its way up to these two. Same thing. It just grabs the two of them and like crushes them together. And then this amalgam of bone and flesh just hits the ground in a pile. Awesome. So he then points to Delthrin and he says, I see. No, actually, he doesn't see it. He says, I know what you've done. I know what you're trying to do here. You will not besmirch my name. I have control of everything behind me. I have turned your undead. They are now with me. And with that, Oso, it is your turn. Well, I hear him say that. I say, you have no power here. And I wave him in the face. <laughs> uh, Twelve. That hits. So yeah, you poof. Right in the face, he's just, well, it's, he's not that tall, so you can just kind of <laughs> go right there, and you catch him, and it just, right down his chin, draws some blood for, for seven damage. And then I will use my extra attack and glaive him again. Okay. That does not hit. All right. All right, that's all I got. Okay. Uh, Avion, it is your turn. All right, I'm going to move right up in his face mm -hmm. and say, I'm going to swipe that smirk off your face and wipe your name from history and attack him with my quarterstaff twice. Sure. Both of those hit. So you come in and boom, boom, two attacks. Both of them find purchase. Both of them hit. And he just continues to kind of shrug them off and laugh. Will, it is your turn. All right, I'm going to move up and just bite the hell out of this guy. Go for it. Uh... Yeah, so you that does not hit. So you had a uh, I get actually pack tactics, so I would get an advantage. Okay, roll it. Go, ahead, I... go ahead and roll it again. Yeah, okay. that, hit, that hits. Um... So you go in and you, you go for the bite after Avion has cracked him twice. He's not quite paying attention. This massive dire wolf shows up and just you kind of catch him on the back of the calf. Um, oh, yeah. Just take a big chunk out of his, his tiny little man boy leg uh, for six damage. I feel good about it. Uh, he's got to roll a DC 13 to be knock prone possibly. Okay. A con save. Let's do that. Nope. Yes. So he goes prone. All right. Let me mark that here so we all can see it. So he is considered prone. All righty. And that brings us to his turn. So he goes ahead and he spends half his movement to stand back up. She does, no problem. Um, and he sees all three of you around him, and he turns and he looks at Mia down on the ground, bleeding, and he smirks and disappears again. Coward. And you see him pop back up over here across the... Uh, Across the across the way, 
Um, and he's kind of looking over his shoulder, and he's just kind of starting to, to walk away. He's not even running. He's just, he, boom, disappears, boom, appears, and then walks. And he's just, ha, 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 ha. And he starts snapping his fingers a little bit. And you see zombies and skeletons kind of move back into uh, his control again. So, like, there's this constant battle between him and uh, Delthrin for control of, of the zombies and skeletons on the battlefield. Um, yeah. With that, you see Delthrin turn, um, and he looks at Janik. Like, they're right across from each other, and they're staring each other down, and Delthrin's like, this is between you and me. We should finish this ourselves. And Janik looks at him and goes, <laughs> We should, old friend. <laughs> and with that, yip yap, it is your turn. Okay. Well, I don't remember how to measure things, but I think he's fine. 30, 35, 40, 40, 50 feet. He's 50 feet. 50 feet. All right. So I am, I am going to cast, um, I'm going to cast hold person on him. Uh, and I'm going to do that maybe by finding it on my sheet somewhere, (laughs) which I don't see. All right, so I'm sure it's here. Well, I don't see it. Um, I can tell you he needs to make a DC 14 wisdom save. Um, what level are you casting this at? Second level. Yeah, you can start to cast it, and immediately it stops. Okay. Well, that's all I got. It sucks. Like you start to you start to cast and like your hand starts to like arcane energy starts to circle your hand and you're like getting ready to, to go and then all of a sudden it crackles down and then dissipates into nothing. Hmm. Well, that's no good. All right, that's all I got. Okay, so it is Delthrin's turn. Um, Delthrin looks at him and he says, "Leave them to their to their own accord." Don't involve them with this. If, if you wish for them to do something, let them fight your minions. But I wish to fight you and you alone. And he turns and he looks back at you guys and he, and he says, Mia is my family. You must make sure that should that force cage disappear, you can get to her. If I should fall, you need to make sure I am resurrected for I alone can save her. And he's looking at you, Avion, specifically when this happens. Um, like, almost, like, you can hear the sound super clearly in your head, like, don't let me go down. Bring me back if I do. Um, with that, you also happen to see two massive... Um, let me bring them up here. Two more giant undead enter the battlefield here. And they don't appear to be under Delthrin's control. Uh (laughs) And they start to make their way toward Delthrin's ogre zombies. And Super you, cool. And you see these two massive creatures, undead, just start duking it out. Just start duking it out, like slashing at each other, punching, grabbing, just like these massive 10 foot tall plus um, behemoth undead just trying to go at each other. And with that, you start to see skeletons and zombies between Delthrin's control and uh, Janik's control start to like fan out in the, in the battlefield. Um, things that had previously been dead 
are starting to resurrect. Things that you guys had killed um, are now starting to are starting to come back. Um, and you're not quite sure whose control they're under until you can start to see which way they're going. So let me start knocking some of these guys back here so you can see what's what. Um, the whole time this is going on, you just see crazy arcane, like dark necrotic energy going back and forth between Delthrin and, and Janik. Green arcane energy going back and forth, like amalgamations of black and green, like coming together. It's almost like the final fight scene in Her with Harry Potter and, and Voldemort. Like these two are just going at it directly across each other uh, on this canal. Um, and with that, a bunch of these zombies start making their way toward you guys. This one comes up, comes right at you, Avion. This one comes up to you, Osel. So the skeleton comes up to you, Osel. I get Polar Master. You sure do. So he gets to about here. And 22 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Yeah. And I'll do uh, Thunderous Smite just because. Well, you don't get that on... Um, oh, I don't get that? Okay. It's you, oh. you just get one attack of opportunity with it. Okay, gotcha. Well, he takes nine damage. Yep. So you get that. Um, it comes up to you, and it's going to attack you with its short sword. I'm pretty sure an 11 does not hit. Does not hit. Okay. Avion... This one is going to attack you. Let me bring him up here real quick. Sorry, there's a lot going on with this battlefield. And number of undead up in her. So it's going to attack you, Avion. Pretty sure seven does not hit you either. And you. Um, inside the force cage, you see these two skeletons just like they're not even messing with Mia anymore. They're just like trying to get to you, Osil. You're the closest one to them, but they just keep they just keep hitting it, and they and they can't. Um, all right, then you see up here. Uh, there's two more. They're being engaged by city guards, and then these two down here that have gotten smashed together have popped back up, and they're actually uh, making their way toward you guys too. They can't quite get there, though. They can get to about there. Um, this guy has run off. He's long gone. Um, I'll just put him as far down here as I can. And then you start to see some of these engaging, making their way over. It seems, it seems like anything on the other side is coming toward you um, and starting to make its way up, too. These guys have pieced out as well. Cool. Like these things are all starting to make their way kind of over this way. And this one is back up too. Okay. Um, so yeah, between Delta and Janik, just back and forth, back and forth. Just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, at this point... Janik looks at Delthrin, and they've been going back, and they're scarred, and they're like just both of them are kind of smoldering in, in necrotic energy. And Janik throws that smirk out again and snaps his fingers. And you see the force cage around Mia disappear. And the two skeletons start to start to come out. Um, and he looks at Delthrin and he says. You have two choices, my friend. Save her or catch me. And you see him disappear and he's gone. Like you see him disappear and he just moves way, way, way further away. And you see Delthrin stand there for a second and he's thinking, and you see him start to, to like, you see him start to cast, you see arcane energy start to surround him. And, 
boom. He starts making his way back up. And he's coming up, and you see him just boom, boom, turn these two zombies. Um, and they kind of walk away. The two skeletons, though, are coming at. Um, also, I'm going to give you an attack here. All right. Does a 12 hit? Uh, 12 does, I believe, just. Nope, 12 does not hit. Okay. Um, so let me jump that. So, Avion, it is your turn. I'm going to try something weird. Can I just use, like, my full, like, just throw my body at both of the skeletons and try to, like, grab them and tackle them and pull them away? You can certainly try. Um, make and... Make? So you, are you actually going to dive at them? Yeah. Okay, so make an acrobatics check with advantage. Because right. this right. is going to be badass. Uh, okay, now make an athletics check. Also with advantage. Okay. So, you dive. Like, you just throw your body at them. And you can't catch quite catch both of them. Um, but the one that's closer to Mia, you... you like tackle and and knock down you're on top of it all right awesome and can i use like a second attack um yeah you do you have a you have a second attack i'm gonna just try to bludgeon it with my fists sure make that attack uh what would i roll for unarmed strike because i don't have that as an attack um i believe it's 1d hold on I think it's one it's just one d4 damage um so just roll roll d20 add your um proficiency bonus all right so 19 plus yeah that's gonna hit yeah and then one d4 yep okay yeah so that's you good. like you 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 come down on it and like you, you're just in your fit of anger. You go to punch and you like kind of miss and you graze its like skull face and you kind of catch part of it, but most of your hand impacts the, the stone below. Um, but you don't quite notice it. Quill, it is your turn. I'm going to, uh, seeing that that's gone. Uh, These I two can't... down here are approaching. All right. Um... I'm gonna make a move down here, and I'm gonna bite. Are they both zombies, or the one on? Uh, as you look at it, the one um, to the left is a zombie, and the one to the right is a. This one is a skeleton. Okay, I'm going after the uh, zombie first, just okay. with a bite. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, that hits. Uh, Twenty-two definitely hits. Eleven piercing damage. Yeah, you you dig into it, and you just find purchase through its rotting flesh into the bone below, and you just pull an arm off. Nice. All right. Is that your first attack? Yep. And I'm going to go back in with the... Uh... Oh, it has to make a... Hold on. It has to make a, oh, this, the 13, to make a yeah. DC 13 uh, save. So, yeah, it makes it so it's still up. So you go back with that one, same guy, or do you want to attack the, the skeleton this time? No, I'm going with the same guy. I ripped off one arm. I'm just going for uh, the other shoulder. So you sink in, and you just completely bite down through and just tear its body in two effectively and it's down yeah get back up from that all right and i'm just going to stay where i am kind of okay. defensive sure okie doke all right so we've got janik's turn janik completely disappears boom from what you saw before he's he's gone you cannot see him anymore um, you still see all of these undead, like these, the, especially the massive ones, just going back and forth, just trading blows. Um, after he leaves, you start to see Deltherins kind of take control, and they start to to do some serious damage. Um, after after he leaves, you kind of see the other undead almost lose interest. Like they they they're still doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're following his command, but they aren't as 
readily or they're not as ready to do it. That's a, about the best description I can have. So Yip Yap, it is your turn. So these two uh, undead that are behind Delthrin, are they? Uh, do they appear to be under his control, or are yes. they? Yes. They're under Delthrin's control. Correct. Okay. Yep. These two right here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So I won't mess with them. Yeah, they're just kind of standing there, like swaying slowly side to side. And how about this one right there, behind um, me? That one is. Yeah. It's making its way toward you. It does okay. not appear to be under his control. Okay. Well, let's see if we can do something about that. I think what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to fire a witch bolt at it. Okay. Actually, I'm going to... Uh, I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, let me see what the range on that is. 30 feet. So... I want to which I think I'm gonna 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh, I'm gonna twin the witch bolt. Okay. And I'm I'm gonna fire one at that guy and one at this guy. I'm sorry, which was the, the first guy is the skeleton and the second one is who? Uh the second one is the one uh, next to Quill. Okay. Go for it. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna do that. Now let's see where it is. Okay, so here's my first one. And I'll and the first one will be at the one that's coming towards me. Sure. Fourteen that hits. Uh, so he takes eleven, <laughs> but he also takes an extra three because lightning is my elemental uh, thing. So okay. he, so uh, because I'm. Oh no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Eleven because I'm not six level. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so eleven damage. You just <laughs> light this thing off, and it's it's got um um like armor scraps on it. It's like pieces of scale mail kind of hanging on. So it just, and it, it kind of, but it keeps coming, albeit a lot slower. All right, then I'm gonna fire at the uh, one next to uh, Quill. Uh-huh. And... 10. 10, that does not hit. Okay. That one is down in front of me, right? Uh, yes. I'll okay. get that real quick here. All right. So I think what I'm going to do now with my move uh, is I'm going to move away. Okay. And I'm going to go to, say, there. Okay. Um, Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. You know what? I'm not sure. going to do that. I'm going to stay where I am was because I'm going to hold the witch bolt into that dude. Awesome. So that's all I got. Okay. Um, with that, it is Delthrin's turn. Um, and he just walks up and Mia or Avion, you're up here. I'm just going to move it kind of like this for the sake of, uh, for, for the sake of that. And he, he, he moves up, uh, right next to Mia. And he looks at the two. He looks at the two skeletons, and and he just. Let me see what he fires off. He's gonna fire off something awesome. Um, let me look up what he, he's gonna do. Uh, what's gonna be fun here? Yeah, I think that's what he's going to do. Sorry, I want to do something awesome with this cuz I've been waiting. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, he is he he looks over at them and he just holds his hand out and you see both of them light up in like greenish black, almost tinged of purple arcane energy. And then all of a sudden, poof, they just disappear. They're gone. And you don't know this, but they both end up on another plane. 
Oh, nice. And he looks down, and he sees Mia, and he looks at you, Avion, and he kind of just holds his hand up, and he says, just wait. And he, and he bends down, and he cradles her, her head under his hand. And it's a side you guys haven't seen of him. It's, it's, it's very gentle. It's very fatherly. Um, and he closes his eyes, and he holds his left hand out, and he whispers a couple words. And he breathes out, and as he breathes out, you see small tendrils go into her nostrils. And she opens her eyes, <gasps> takes a deep breath, and just looks up at him. It says, What happened? We're going to close out initiative for the, for the time here. The undead in the battlefield, Delthrins have overtaken um, Janik's undead. He's, he's crushed them, most of them. He's had them dump them in this little canal. <coughs> the, the two big zombie ogres are just scooping up bodies and like piling them up, getting them ready. Um, they're all like starting to just put stuff. It's just piling stuff up, like, over here. They just start to move all of these dead, undead bodies. Dead, undead bodies. <laughs> um, into a big pile over here. The... People have come back out of their homes um, just to see what's going on. You see a lot of eyes. Uh, city guards are showing up. Um, you see... Um, Nero and Bala come back and they've got a ton of city guards. They also have a group of people, kind of nondescript dress, um, but it appears that there's some, probably some magic users with them. Um, but these two big dudes, zombie ogres, have just started assembling all of these, all of these city guards are running up. Um, they're trying to figure out what's going on and, um, Deltharin, after doing this to Mia, looks at her and he says, I, I never should have stayed underground. I, I, was, I, was, I was a fool. I was, I was a coward. I should have come out and fought him. I knew that's what he wanted. I was, <coughs> I was afraid, honestly. I, I believed his power to be greater than mine, and I thought I would die. And you... Unfortunately, bore the brunt of that. And he starts, he just starts crying, like tears dripping down onto her face. Um, and he turns and he looks at you, Avion, and through his tears, he just says, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he turns over and he looks at you, Ossel, and I'm, I'm sorry. And he starts apologizing and he just, he just head in hands, just starts to weep. Um, as he's doing this, more and more people are kind of coming out. They see what's happened. Um, city guards have have completely come up, um, kind of surrounded the area and blocked everything off. And the city guard, the the head guy, comes up and he says, "What? What's what's happened here? What's is is it over?" And and, and Deltrin kind of shakes shakes it off and he stands up and he blinks, squints real hard, and he says. It's done. You could say this is my fault. I'll take. I'll take full responsibility for this. He takes a deep breath. He says, "I'll make sure all of these bodies are removed, and you, you, you won't see me ever again. You won't see any undead in here ever again." And they kind of city guards are just kind of like looking at each other and. Avion, what would you like to do? I'm going to just... I'm like bawling at this point. I'm just going to grab hold of Mia and say thank the gods that she's alive. Just ignore everyone else. Yeah. Osul. 
I'm just standing by Deltrin and and uh, a single tear just starts coming down my cheek and I kind of wipe it away and I turn around to the city guard and I say let let this man do what he needs to he's he's done a great service for this town today regardless of how you may feel about him he has kept us safe and all you safe today so let him do what he needs to do Quill um, I want to wild shape back into Quill so I can actually um... talk yeah, you use words. <laughs> um, oh, it didn't change the token. I got it. Okay, cool. Thanks. That's weird. It didn't do it. I'll fix it later. Okay. And I'm just going to, well, approach, and um, I'm going to kind of, like, put my arm around Osol and, and kind of give it a, just a knowing nod, you know, like, you know, and, and, and kind of a deep breath and just, um, yeah, man, that was that was intense. And, and, we, and leave it at that. Rolf? So, uh, I think Yip Yap's pretty traumatized for, uh, from his ordeal. Uh, and he's been trying to hold it in. Uh, but he's had little tears in his eyes. And, and now he sees everyone crying. And he just bursts out sobbing from his ordeal. And he's going to run. Shouting, oh, 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 oh. And he's going to run and hug Oso. And crying all the time and babbling about how traumatized he is. And then he's going to hug Quill. And then he's going to run up and hug Avion. But he's going to call her Ozak. Ozak, it was terrible. <laughs> and he's just going to cry and babble about how traumatized he is. Awesome. Having no idea what happened. <laughs> so, yeah. You kind of all come together and... The the two zombie ogres have piled this massive pile and Delthrin turns and he looks and you see them walk into the pile itself um, and like all of a sudden then the whole thing goes up in flame and everything starts to burn. Um, and it's a... Well, yip yip's back. <laughs> and it's a... <laughs> It's 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 not his doing. However, uh, I know. Yip Yap holds his hand out, like, "Look what I did!" Uh, it the smell is pretty bad, um, but he doesn't seem to care. He's like, "Everything here, I'm cleaning. This is this needs to go away. Like I, I like I'm done with this." And the city guards are kind of watching, and they're shifting around, and and they, they kind of make their way up and. Like, Deltrin walks off to the side, and they kind of have a private conversation, and, and Mia looks up at you, Avion, and she says, This isn't how I thought I'd, I'd get out of this, but here I am. And she kind of looks at you and winks, and then <coughs> gra grabs the back of your head and just pulls you into this really, really tight embrace. Um, while she's laying there just arms around you pulling you in tight and she just she starts to cry it's like a, a very very gentle very light sob um, and the two of you just kind of have your moment and you all kind of start to recover and um, kind of go go past everything that just happened um, it's 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 a pretty intense scene. The city is has been pretty traumatized by by all of this this um, personal vendetta from from Janik against against Delthrin. So you see, then the front door to the Tankard of Eels open, um, and out walks a blonde-haired woman, and she's got. A whole group of people alive um, with her and she kind of walks up she, and she, she sees you first Quill and she says oh, what what just what just happened um well um that little kid that drug me out here I'm assuming you all saw him um he turned a bunch of undead against the city and uh and 
Deltrin came and kind of took care of it. And uh, we thought we lost Mia, but we, we it, it seems like everything's okay for now. Oh, there was... I, I know who you're talking about. He came through on the inside and several undead followed and unfortunately they they got to they got to one of the women before I could protect protect her but he passed through he had me and he just passed through and went out and as soon as we took care of them I barred the doors and tried to keep everybody on the inside safe my my name is Windovia Windovia Westwind Dovia. I'm so thankful for whoever you are and whatever you're doing here and looking at her quilt, she's um, she appears to be a half elf. Um, you're not quite sure on the age, maybe like ninety, a hundred years old. Blonde hair, um, blue eyes, and yeah, she's she's standing there, and she's she doesn't have any armor on, but she's got the cleaver from the kitchen, um, and she's like there's blood and kind of some stuff dripping off of it. You can tell where she was hacking up some undead. Um, and she kind of turns and looks and says, anybody want a drink? Absolutely. Osul, you want to help me clear the undead first and throw them in the fire that might be in the tankard? Be happy to. So yeah, you guys go in, um, drag out. There were like three zombie bodies and you just boom, throw them in the pile and it's it's continuing to burn out there and people everywhere watching this like coming out of, out of out of their homes to see what's happening and city guards are asking city guards and city guards are like trying to explain the situation after they had talked to Deltrin and um yeah you guys all make your way back in um and and Deltrin... also kind of takes a little extra time at the fire like staring into it, the flames and you know his hair is kind of blowing in the the wind off the fire and he's just thinking you know he kind of Quill has already kind of left him at this point. He says, this is why evil will never sleep. And and just kind of steals his resolve that he, you know, kind of felt a little bit safe in Marcember, but it's very obvious that his, his work is not done. So he kind of takes that extra second looking into the flames and then enters back in the, to the tankard. Before before you make it back in, as you're going in, you're, you're still by yourself. Um, mm-hmm. Quill has kind of moved his way back up. As you're walking away, after you turn from from the fire, the voice um, the voice comes back, um, and and he says, "Do you are you aware of what was happening?" I, I was, and I don't deserve it. I don't deserve your help, but I I thank you for it. You you saved me from an awful fate and possibly no. turning against my friends. I mean, do you know what he was trying to do? I, f- I feel like he was trying to take me over and bring out my worst. No. Which we both we both know is in there. He was not trying to bring out your worst. What you don't know about him is that at one point, many, many years ago, he had taken the body of a child in Thay, grew up to become a wizard. A red wizard of Thay. He was trying to take you because you are an Azimar. And the red wizards have found that a sacrifice of an Azimar allows them to open portals. He was trying to take you so that he could open portals at will. Well then. Well, thank you again. I have done nothing to deserve your kindness recently. Uh, But I'm thankful for it and glad I'm not going to be helping to open any portals. But uh, these these people need me and I'm doing everything I can to redeem myself and wash away this curse. Remember your child. Do not forget the good. And do not stray too far into the dark for too long. And pfft, voice disappears. You sense it leave your head. Osul looks back over the fire just one last time before going back into the tankard. Okay. 
as you make your way back in. Um, everybody's in there, and it's it's not terribly beat up in there. Um, I mean, you had tried to pull stuff up and barricade stuff. Like things are disheveled, but it's not like you know totally totally trashed. Um, the shark, giant undead shark is propped up against the side door. It hasn't been beat up too much, just an FYI. Um, so yeah, everybody's kind of piled in. Uh, everyone's up at the, at the bar. No one's like sitting down. Everyone's just kind of crowding around. Um, and just Mia isn't even, she's standing next to you, Avia, and you're kind of like helping hold her up a little bit. And uh, Duke, the, the, the main bartender, is just ripping out drinks as fast as people want to drink them. It's just like you guys, Delthrin, Mia, and then like the Windovia and the six other people that were with her. And everybody's just kind of like standing at the bar. Was the buffet uh, destroyed during it? <laughs> it's overturned, but there is food on the floor. I'm an emotional eater, so I'm going to try to get the uh, <laughs> as much as I can. There's 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 some hard like salami, um, like uh, effectively some jerky, and then a little bit of fruit, some grapes, um, maybe a couple pieces of cheese left. Perfect. Yeah, I'm just going to start. I'll go with the jerky first and start putting the other things kind of in my pocket and. Just walk up to Osel and hand him a piece of cheese. Osel uh, graciously uh, accepts it and nods to Quill, even despite his uh, unusual eating style. Uh, appreciates him being there and uh, appreciates him uh, his unique personality. Fair enough. What are the rest of you guys doing? So I, I think Yip Yap would still be crying. He'd be very upset, traumatized by his experience, and he'd be he'd be babbling about gnomes and small cages and torture and forced to go to the shiny, and he'd be taking drinks of whatever people were giving him and just crying and babbling to whoever would listen to him. As he says shiny, I, Rishan is like, you went to the shiny? Did they take uh, you? Yeah, 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 went to the shiny. Some fool tried to bury shiny. <laughs> But Rolf the looter can get to shiny. Do you know where the shiny is? Some amateur buried it. A few amateurs buried it. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Rolf got shiny. You have the shiny. Oh, I gave it, gave it away. Why yeah. would you give it away? Uh, Osa walks over and literally picks him up and said, "You gave it away." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't you hear about the gnome? The gnome. He was in a cage with me. Oh, Zurich? Zurich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shifty eyes, beady little bugger. Trying to steal stuff from me. We were so close all the time. And he'd wipe his nose and drink. And Delthrin kind of walks up, and as you're holding him, Osel, he, he looks at you and he says, he gave the amber to me. I, uh, I kind of, I kind of drop. I have the yip yap, and he just kind of falls back in the seat. <laughs> hey, and and he says, "We need to do something about this. It's, it's too sought after. I, I don't, I do not want it. It's too dangerous to have. I think oh. you all need to take it away. Find yeah, a place. I'll, I'll hold up my hand. Oh yeah, yeah. If you don't want it, I'll, I'll take shiny." Uh, wizard staff, not it. <laughs> he says, Delthrin, where, where, where's the best place to dispose of this so that it doesn't fall in the wrong hands? It was found in the land. I believe the sea may be the best place. But I, I, I'm not sure. You may be able to... Yeah, the Sea of Fallen Stars is deep. That may be the best place. There are 
Tritons and Water Genasi down there. I'd be scared of that. They could them finding it, right? Like, uh, we shouldn't we find out what to do with it, Deltrin, or what it does? Well, I've told you what it does. Each each one contains something dark, and it talks to you, Osul. You know. Yeah. It tries. It tries to get you to take a gift. I worry that, like anything, not all gifts are free. So do not accept whatever it tries to give you, and it will try to give you something as often as it can. They are evil, but I do not know where they came from or what they are doing here. Will you take them? Yeah, uh, we're, it's the safest to be with us as opposed to possibly falling into Janik's hands or someone else, some other enemy we have yet to encounter. I... Shiny's always safe with Rolf the Looter. Always. How exactly is it safer with us? We seem to attract trouble no matter where we go. Well, that's our specialty, isn't it? It's safer with you because you can disappear. You can make your way out. I unfortunately cannot. I must remain here. Albeit quiet, I must remain here. My family is here. And he looks over at Mia. He says, I will not leave her. Never, ever, ever again. I will always be at her aid. Well, we shall dispose of it in the Sea of Fallen Stars, then. That seems to be the best, best place for it. And the most likely for it to not be found again. I mean, if you find something better somewhere else, by all means, do it. If you think you can destroy it, if you find a way, by all means, do it. But make haste. Do not... I don't want to carry it, but I'll follow you, Osul. Yes, we must do this together. Not one of us can, can take care of this burden. We almost figure out a way to destroy this evil once for all. Shiny is never a burden. And, and as, uh, you're, as you're having this conversation, um, Windovia walks up and, and she comes to you, Avion. Um, Mia has, has gone off and kind of talked to, to Delta and they're having a private conversation off to the side. Um, and, and she comes up to you, Avion, and she says... So, you wonder where it could be safe? I believe I can help you. I do not believe we've properly met. I've, I've seen you outside. My name is Windovia Westwind. I am, for lack of better terms, the right hand of a man who wishes to make things right. I don't know if you've heard, but back in the Sword Coast, up north, near the spine of the world, there is a force amassing, led by a group of dragonborn, with one in particular, having gained a lot of power. He has sent a lieutenant of his out east, that is who I work for. <coughs> to try to amass forces in this area. Recruiting, if you will. The man I work for, his name is Simus. Simus Wopool. He is Lieutenant of Cassilius. But I should say, former Lieutenant. He is recruiting good people to do deeds to try to prevent Cassilius from obtaining more amber. If you would work with me, I know you have no reason to believe me or to trust me. But if I can prove myself, if I have not proved myself a little bit already, I would like to prove myself to you that you can trust me, that you can believe me, and that should things work out well, 
that you may in fact join us to fight, to fight the evil that rises in the West. And she just looks at you plainly, like, if you want to make any rolls, feel free, but you can choose to believe her, choose not to believe her, or choose to roll, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'm going to do an insight check for sure. Okay. <coughs> oh, <damn. laughs> you're not sure. You're, you're pretty apprehensive about trusting people. Um, you're, 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 you're not quite sure what's going on with her. She could be telling the truth. She could be making it all up. There's been a lot going on, and, and you, you aren't sure. And she kind of looks around, and the rest of you, the rest of you, kind of picked up bits and pieces of it, except for except for Yip Yap. He's he's sobbing too hard, um, and and obviously Delthrin and and Mia didn't hear it, but Quill, Quill, you and Osel picked up picked up a little bit of it. Uh, I'll roll in. Also, I'll roll inside too, just to see if I can sure. discern anything. Probably not. <laughs> You don't think she's lying. You don't think she's lying. But you're not sure what her intent is. You aren't sure if her intent really is to... Um, is to really help. Mm -hmm. You can't quite grab that. Okay. Hey, Cranio Dad, thanks for the raid. Well, what do you think? <sighs> I don't, I don't know who we can trust. We just met her. Um, dispatching of a zombie. Uh, maybe she kind of had to. Uh, I don't know if that really proves anything. And I say this loud enough for her to hear. And she... she believe me. If I were in your shoes, I'd have the same apprehensions. Because we could be bringing the amber to somebody to do ill with it. That's what my fear is. It's entirely possible. Um, none of you would know who Cassilius is. Um, so rolling for that isn't, isn't going to help you. Um, and she says, let me tell you what I can. Your friends Zarek and Rolf, a.k.a. Yip Yap, this little kobold here, and she like roughly pats you on the back, um, and it, it's enough to like stop you from crying for a second. She says the two of you were taken by agents of the Zentarum. They like to call themselves Zents. Um, I don't know if you've heard, but they're trying to make a name for themselves in this city. Yeah, we've heard. At, at the expense of the Scarlet End, they're trying to move in on their, uh, their territory, so to speak. And they've made some inroads, not much. I had infiltrated their ranks. I had learned of them. Um, your friend Nero. How do you think he knew the location of that house? He's well learned in the city. How do you think Sensu knew what he knew? Because he's crazy and won't shut up. Ah, but those who talk, while they say a lot, some of it doesn't mean anything, but some of it does. Those who talk can often mask truth in a lot of words. I've been working with Sensu. I've been working with Nero. I have infiltrated the Zent term as an agent. They believe I'm an agent. I'm trying to find whatever information I can to take back to Simus. I'm going to do an inside bad. check immediately. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You are pretty convinced <laughs> she's telling the truth. Okay. She's, she, you, you are pretty sure she is being completely honest with you. All right, so you infiltrated the Zents. 
and you're now going to Simon's to report to him. I saw uh, regular reports back to him, yes. We are trying to find good people to help rid this area of Amber. I'm just going to look at Osul and I'm going to say, I awkwardly believe her. Um, if, I'm standing right here. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't care either way. Um, I, I look at her, I was like, this is him. Yeah. Um, he was eating food off the floor, so... I picked it up Get before eating too. it. <laughs> so, fair enough. Well, yeah, Avion, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are that before you guys showed up, I had a pretty lucrative job and a quiet life on the shore, and everything was totally fine. And now I'm being thrust into some world ending shit. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, and I've been that... sober for three years, and I'm seriously questioning that decision right now. Well, unfortunately, that life uh, is up in flames as that undead pile out there. So you're in it now. And I guess I'm in it. Well, and do you know what Simus plans to do with the Amber when he collects any of it? He's searching for a way to destroy it. Safely. I like that idea. I would love to destroy it. I agree. I believe that we should uh, take this up to him and see if we can all collectively come up with a, the best possible use of destroying this godforsaken piece of stone. And Rolf, was, Yep, go ahead. I was just going to look at Rolf and say, you want to go for, find more shinies? Yeah, yeah, find, let's find Chinese. Chinese, good. Okay. These people, the, this lady, this Windovia, she she looks trustworthy because there's no gnomes. I Rolf, trust her. <laughs> she is a half elf. She just well, kind of, she just, she again looks down at you and she just kind of like shakes her head and she's like, Osol, Ozak, Quill, Windovia, Rolf. Good key. Avion. My name is Avion. Oh. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I said. I, I Who are you again? Like, I, what is... Why I'm, are you here? I'm, I'm Rolf the looter. I loot. He is perce oh. perceptive. You can say oh, that. Okay, so you guys have a musician and you never mentioned it? Well... Every, every group should have one, really. I also find Chinese, especially when people bury them. Who are he also likes to get get likes to get uh, kidnapped, but that's beside the point. Yeah, well, that was that was that was not good. Well, I, Windovia seems that we're all in an accord. Uh, we shall head up and meet up with your contact. Oh, we're we're not ready to meet him yet. You have to. I mean, you've you've done some good things here, but there's there's more to prove here. I, as much as I need you to trust me, I also need to trust you. So there are some some things that we are going to have to do before we can go meet Simus. Um, I've been following you for a little bit, and while most of your good deeds came from your friend Ozak, um. I believe popping necrotic wings in a bar to order a drink isn't necessarily the greatest good deed, should I say, Master Osul. <laughs> well, it, it achieved an end, and that's what his goal was. <laughs> well, I paid for the drinks. Our end is the propagation of good. Did you see the shark? Yes, I saw the shark. Impressive, correct? Yes, impressive. And that doesn't give us any weight in your mind? Was, I mean, maybe a little. You killed a giant undead shark. But you could have been doing that for monetary gains. You were working with Sensu on that, I believe, were you not? Was there not a bet going on with that? Damn it. You have been paying attention. I have ears everywhere. 
Why'd you have to say it so weird like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, clearly we need to uh, earn our way into your good graces. So uh, what should you have us do? Let's take some time here. I will be in contact soon. I'll leave a message here. We'll meet up. We'll find a, we'll find a way. And she takes off. Gracefully, actually. It's it's quite a she like flourishly turn, like walks out of the bar. Um, very nimble. She has a good walk. And as she leaves, Deltrin and, and Mia come back up and they're kind of it's like they've had a, a very long, hard conversation. Um, and Mia kind of wipes some tears away from her face. And Delthrin, Delthrin walks up to you all and he says, I don't know whether my name will be restored or not. I don't know how the people of this city will view me from here on out. Frankly, I don't care anymore. I've reached an age. Not by natural ways, but I've reached an age where I just don't care. I'm going to live the rest of my days as close to my family as I can. But I would like to give you a gift for helping. My name may not be clear, but you, you, you actively helped. You helped against Janik, you helped the city, you helped the people. And that is what I respect. My old home. You are welcome to it. I will gift it to you. To do with it whatever you wish. Seems Bye. as if it would, that would be a nice, nice home for all of us. For us or we could sublet it. if I may make a suggestion. Mia enjoys her work. Mia does not own the tankard of eels. But Mia could work at a place of her own. Maybe you open a tavern of your own. Maybe you open a bed and breakfast. You can choose to do with it what you want. However, she is good at what she does. And I believe you have another friend who is a very good cook. It's very true. I believe that's a good idea. I think it's a good use of Mia's talents, our friend's talents, and the, the home itself. You probably uh, could use some light after the darkness that has befallen it recently. And he says... Uh, I will pay to have it rebuilt. We will do it however you wish. I will fund it. It can have. Sounds like. It can, and he looks at you, Quill, and he says, We will redo the outside. We will build gardens. You can help grow them. It will be a place of sanctuary while you are in the city. And he looks at you, Osul, and he says, And for you, Master Osul, build a shrine. Whoever you worship, Whoever you serve, build a shrine to them. I will help you. I will, I will put everyone in contact with who you need. Master Yip Yap, I don't really know what you need. Maybe a place to dig. Um, some shiny to swim through. Whatever it is that you need to better yourself, I can help you. An avion. Also, training areas. Practice areas. Whatever you need to make yourself better. Quiet places. And he kind of turns his head a little bit with that one. Whatever you need to improve yourself, it shall be done. You've, you've done enough. You, you brought me back. I don't need anything else. Well, this shall be your place to do with it as you wish. All I ask is that Mia is involved and whoever you wish to involve with, with her, that is up to you. I have made my suggestion. Come to me as you need it. You know how to get to me. I shall be in my... 
in my study. You know how to get there. There are multiple ways. Come find me as you need me. Uh, what if Janik returns? It is possible that Janik does return. Um, I don't believe he will. But it is possible. There is, there's no more Amber. Once you leave, the Amber will not be here. He knows that. He knows that I had a piece, but he knows that I don't want it anymore. Uh, but he could come back. That risk always will exist. He probably will figure we had the Amber. Um, so if he follows us, and I look at Aviana, I was like, a second shot at killing him, perhaps. I look forward to it. Okay. Why don't we take our break right here? And when we come back, we will do a giveaway. We will do Shannon's giveaway. Um, if you want to hold it up on the on the cam real quick da, 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 so people da, da, see da, it. Da. It's dope. Mimic chest. How many dice does that hold again? 55 plus D20s. 55 plus D20s. Wow. And some of them are oversized D20s, so this thing holds a lot. And really it has cool. at the bottom the Castle Mac logo. Nice. One of a kind, limited edition, never making one of these again. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take a short break, 10 minutes, and when we come back, we will start that giveaway. So, nice. friends, come see us soon.
and welcome back everyone um yeah craziness the party zombies undead little kids bodies taken over by necromancers what's gonna happen next what's gonna happen next is i'm going to kick off a giveaway here um our very own shannon has crafted one of the coolest things i've seen in a long time um so let me kick this off and yeah all you have to do is type exclamation mark join in the chat and we will give this away um 600 seconds to go y'all so fire that up um, and we will jump back into the game so where we left off the party had just watched delthrin um, and Janik have a pretty massive necromancer fight out in the streets of Marsember. Undead everywhere, um, battling each other, the forces of Delthrins versus the forces of Janik's. Uh, just crazy, crazy stuff going on. Uh, Delthrin ultimately prevailed due to Janik piecing out. He dropped the force cage that contained Mia, and Delthrin had to choose, should I save her or should I go after Janik? And he chose to save Mia. With that, the party went back into the Tankard of Eels, uh, where they were approached by Windovia Westwind, a agent of Simus Wopool, a, a do-gooder, uh, a lieutenant or a, an assistant of a lieutenant of Cassilius, who has gone good, um, trying to actively undo what Cassilius is doing out west. So with that. You are still in the Tankard of Eels. Delthrin has just gifted you his old home to do with it what you wish. And we will start right there. So, you tell me how you would like to proceed, and I will, I will give you the money that you need. Mia will have it. I believe we all will have our own little spin on the, the establishment. I believe... Uh, we can all use our talents and our friends' talents wisely to make this uh, a, a, a wonderful place to convene in Marsumber. I look over to Mia and I ask, is, is this what you want? I mean, working with us has gotten you quite literally killed. <sighs> that is true. However, had you not come here... Who knows what would have happened? You prevented, you prevented that amber from getting into someone else's hands who's evil, much worse. So where would I be if you hadn't have come? She kind of tilts her head to the side. My dear, this world is full of unknowns. I could be struck by a horse coming out of this building. I could slip and fall and crack my head. There are no guarantees. We just choose to do what makes us happy and follow those pursuits. This would make me happy. Can we keep the shark? <laughs> you can keep the shark. Yes! It took... That you have no idea how much that thing pissed me off. I want that on my wall. I want it to know who's boss. We can we can put that in the attic, and it can and it can hang out there. That will be perfect. It will not scare any guests. I think that will be an appropriate place. The attic. The attic. Fine, yes. but the attic the attic is now my man cave. I hope that you are okay with that because I want to see that shark. That works for me. You just keep it in your space, and that's fine. So are you on board then with our bed and breakfast idea? If you're happy, then I'm happy. I'll get Bala, and we can make a run at this. She makes delicious, delicious things. Yes, we know. And at that quill, like, you pull out of your pocket one of her little biscuits. Yes. 
Yeah, I'm keeping that. <laughs> All right. So she says, well, I know you will have to go soon. Um, we can figure out what you need in the time we have before you go. Um, but I, I think I can take care of this. This is, this is something I think I need. I'm, I'm ready to do something on my own. I've got, I've got ideas. I know, I know what makes this town tick. And she kind of smirks at that and looks at you, Avion, and says, I got you to me, didn't I? I never told you what I realized, did I? No. I'm just gonna grab her and like pick her up and spin her around and tell her that I love her. Like, spin her so that the rest of them can't see her, or just like like a just like a spinning motion, like a twirl. Just like a happy twirl. Okay. So you do a quick twirl and like. You grab her, like, one hand behind the shoulder, one hand at the small of the back, and, like, give her a twirl, and you say, I love you. And she, she looks at you, and, and hand reaches up, like, behind, behind your head, and she says, I love you, too. I knew the moment you came in, even bloody and beat up and near death, but I just knew. And she pulls you in, and she gives you a kiss. Yay! <laughs> we have entertainment at um, our bed and breakfast. Sure. All right. I believe you have this. This gentleman here is is a looter, is he not? Oh, I, uh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, Rolf, the looter. I can loot the new place. <laughs> I, I'll I'll loot it. Totally. I'm, sure, I'm sure you will loot it good. Loot it. Yes. Hey, what? Hey, what happened to Ozak? He's dead. I killed him and uh, ate his heart. Oh. No, our our That's dwarf that. our dwarf companion uh, decided to take the um, the civil life. He, uh, if you have, if you remember, one of the children that we escorted back from the mines. Um, he is now guardian to that child and is uh, taking care of her for and returning to being a father, which I can do nothing but commend him for, though my heart misses him battling beside us in this con in this quest we are on. Uh, for, for a while, I thought he just got a lot taller. I wasn't sure. <laughs> You've got to learn your genders, man. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what that means, but yeah. <laughs> And not a simpler life. Have you wait until she's a teenager? It won't be a simple life. No. Well, that's, no, that's for Ozak to discover. Yeah. Oh. Um, I think with that, I'm I'm gonna just say that I'm exhausted. I want to I want to take a. I'm gonna, I'm guys. I'm gonna go to bed. I I don't have any much much else in me for the day. I think that's uh. I think we've all earned a, a nice rest. Yeah. Yeah, and, and with that, like, Mia's, okay, uh, you know where the baths are? Um, I don't think anything upstairs was affected. So I, uh, I will bring everyone one last drink for the night. It will be ready in your room by the time you get back from your bath. Um, Quill, would you like something to eat, perchance? The answer is yes. I will bring a plate of food <laughs> up to your room. Would anyone else like anything to eat? Yeah. yeah, yeah, food, food, good. Okay, I will. I will just find what I can find here, and we'll have um, Duke put some stuff together. And yeah, I'll, I'll make sure it's in your rooms, and we'll get some. <sighs> she just takes a deep breath and exhales, and turns and goes like back to work, just like she normally does, running around, just, doing, <laughs> doing her thing. Just died today. Not a big deal. <laughs> It's, it's Mia at her core is, is working. Um, so yeah, so you guys hit the baths, you go, you get food in your room, drinks, everything's, everything's good. Um, Avion, you get a knock at the door. Um, it's Mia. She says, you, you can 
you can stay with me if you like. You don't need to stay in this room. I turn to whoever I'm sharing the room with and be like, peace, and then I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll get my stuff later. And then... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, night comes. It's a glorious night of sleep. Like, even though there's that faint hint of burning undead in the air, you know that you helped save the city again. Um... And, and you rest your weary bodies on pretty comfortable beds. Um, is there anything you would like to do before you go to sleep? Avian? Oh, no. Well, oh, Avian, I know what you're going to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yip, yeah. It's Castle Mac after dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yip, yap. Anything you would yes. like to do? Uh, I, I think Yip Yap's still traumatized by by his uh, uh, captivity, so he would uh, he would he would eat his food, cry himself to sleep. Okay. Is anyone? Ro- are you in a room by yourself, or are you rooming with someone? Uh, I don't know. He's with Quill. Yeah, he's yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And I'm just trying to fall asleep listening to him cry. Okay. Osul's Osul's in his in his room and he's taking off his armor and and taking just a whetstone and sharpening his glaive and wiping the blood off of it and just you know general housekeeping of his weapons to keep them sharp. So you finish you finish all that and you go ahead and you you all go to sleep. You wake up the next morning. Beautiful day. Um, it's been probably about 10 days now since you've gotten to Marsember. Um, 10 or 11 days. The cold that was kind of clinging on has finally let go, and it's that beautiful spring weather. Like, you wake up, the sun is out, it's like 60 degrees, it's this no more undead smell, the, the, the pile of bodies is gone, there's no char, everything's been cleaned, it's like it never happened. Um, just absolutely gloriously beautiful day birds are chirping it's unbelievably nice it's like when spring happens here and you go out for the first time you're like damn that's a nice day damn it's a nice day alright I think that I'm going to grab some food from the um, buffet and walk outside and just kind of be going through the dirt like kind of enjoying the day looking for beetles and just kind of, kind of just be in my in my zen moment there. So yeah, like if you remember outside the front door, there's some steps that go down, and there's like a little, like rock face area, and then below it there's some dirt and plants and, and trees and stuff. So you're down there, and you're just like hands rooting around through it. And people are kind of like walking past, giving you sideways glances, like I don't know what you're doing. Um, is there anything you'd like to do specifically? Um, I think that I'm going to just kind of be in my Zen moment, kind of reaching down, touching the ground, trying to feel, um, if there is any evil, I think that I'm still kind of worried about young Finn possibly being around and just seeing, you know, how the city's reacting to, um, the evil that was last night. Sure. So you use your, um, Ola sense, mm-hmm. um, and you get a 50 mile, or no, sorry, a five mile, you five get a mile. five mile uh, radius. And you, you put your hand to the, there's like a little shrub down there and you put it on there and you focus and you can feel the, like your energy kind of combined with the plants and you feel like you, you go into the roots and through the ground and the roots that intertwine with other roots and it spreads. And you just get this encompassing feeling of all the plant life and the and the the plant based nature around you. And it's it's like a warm blanket on a cold day. It feels great. It feels way better than it did just yesterday or the day before when you had done this last. Um, you get no sense of evil. This is the cleanest nature has felt in this area to you since you've gotten here. 
and I'm in pure ecstasy because of it. I just this is kind of reminds me like when I close my eyes, it's like the peace and calm of my grove, and kind of get. I, I feel like we we uh, did something huge last night, and that this is the the peace that we fought for. Yeah, it's it's a it yeah it brings you back to your grove. That's a, that's exactly right. Um, you you feel great and. You zone out. Like, while you're doing this, you have no idea what's going on around you. Um, Osel, anything you'd like to do this morning? Um, I will walk down and I'll, I'll see if I can find somebody who might know a little bit more about the town than I do. Um, maybe me or, or someone else is hanging around the bar. Um, strangely, neither Mia nor Avion are down yet. Um... Right now, you've got Duke kind of running, running the house in the back there, and uh, yeah. Um, I'll I'll go back. And, D- Duke, uh, what's uh, can, can you can you help me here? Can, I, I'm I'm looking for something. Uh, yeah. What's uh, what's going on? Do you know of an armorer or anyone who who makes or sells weapons in the town? Uh, yeah. There's there's couple places i can point you to any of them anyone that you would highly recommend i would gladly uh give my business to um let's see and he kind of goes back he was back in my day i was using um uh what was it his name was transon transon he seems to make uh I think he's still around. He's down by the the docks over near the uh, near the navy, the naval pier. Well, thank you, Duke. I'll go take a walk, and Ozil leaves the tavern and walks down towards uh, his his shop. It's gonna be a solid like 30, 40 minute walk each way. That's fine. He he'll take he'll. I, I think you know he wants to clear his mind and, and kind of recenter himself, um, and you know sometimes. He, he likes his solitude, so I think he would enjoy the, the walk. Sure. That's fine. So you, you head out. Um, cool. Yip Yap, what would you like to do? So I, I think Yip Yap in the morning, as traumatized as he was, he would wake up feeling great, uh, the trauma gone. So he would he would run downstairs and be hungry, and he would eat at the buffet. And then as he was doing that, I think he would seek out uh, Mia if she was there. She's not down and yet. She's not down yet. So <laughs> right now you oh, see all you you see a, a few patrons. You see Duke behind the bar, and you see Quill just like filling a plate at the buffet. So he he would he would go up to the bartender to Duke, and uh, he would uh, Yip Yap would say to him, uh, "Hey, do do you know of the ruins of Star Mantle? Ever heard of that?" <sighs> yeah, it's. I mean, there's that's all they are ru- rumors of ruins. It's 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 out on the the sea of fallen stars. It was uh, we he- we heard about it as kids. It's a, there's always a story about the ruins of Star Mantle. It's who knows what's true or not. Apparently, it used to be a, a glorious city of I think wizards or some sort of caster. Uh, they they all gathered there, and I don't know what they did, but one day they were all gone. Can, can you show Rolf the looter how to get there? Uh, do you have a map? I don't see any, like, looks behind the bar, and he's like, I, uh, we don't keep maps here. Uh, no, can, can you just, uh, like, point me point me the way? Which way is it? Uh, and he, is like, it far? He, like, holds his hand up, and he goes, the front of the building. Goes, it's that way a lot of miles. Thank like, you. Like a solid seven days on a ship. That's a, that's a long way. Right, thank you. Thank you. And then Rolf, he'd go back to eating his food. And... <laughs> He's like, sure thing, Rolf. Waiting, well. waiting for Mia to come down, who probably has better information. Okay. Um, Quill, what are you doing? Um, I think that I'm I'm gonna just kind of after I'm done 
with my thing, I'm going to come back in and uh, sit down next to Yip Yap and just also have a plate full of food and just eating and trying to discuss with Yip Yap a little bit of what went on when we could, when we couldn't find him and get, kind of give him all the backstory to it. Okay. And I'm not positive he's understanding everything, but <laughs> but, but but trying. Um, Avion, what are you doing? I ain't getting out of bed unless somebody is threatening my life. So, <laughs> so while you're while you're you're there, you you do notice that in your like hazy kind of you've just woken up. You kind of roll over and you you touch that side of the bed and and it's it's warm, but there's no one there. Um, you you look up and you see Mia getting dressed and um, getting ready and, and she's like kind of hurried at this point. She's like she's not upset. She's she's late for work. Um, and she turns and she looks and she goes, just go, just go back to bed. I'll be downstairs. Come down when you're ready. And goes out the door and goes downstairs I guess I'll go see my friends save the world all that stuff so I get up get dressed and head downstairs skipping merrily all the way <laughs> so yeah I'm yip so yap. happy I'm gay in fact it's great <laughs> <laughs> so yip yap yeah, you fun. and Quill downstairs you see Mia come down um, and she's like tying on her apron as, as she's coming down the stairs and she's like kind of like pulling her hair back and getting kind of getting ready and um, probably like five minutes later you see Avion almost like floating down the stairs <laughs> like almost like gliding um, gliding down and just big smile on her face uh, and Mia just gets behind the bar and she starts you know like going to show Master Quill she comes up to your table Master Quill Master Rolf, um, good morning to you. I see you have found the buffet. Can I get you anything to drink that Duke has not already gotten you? I'm just going to sip my coffee and just smile at both of them, and then just look at just look at Avion and be like, "I didn't know you could smile." <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Do I have something on my face? Yes, it goes like this. It must be a disease. I can cure you. <laughs> now I'm good. Okay. And Mia just kind of like smiles and turns back, and people are starting to come in for for the breakfast thing, and mostly people are coming in because they want to know what the hell happened. They want to hear some gossip. They want to hear some rumors. They start asking Mia questions, and like more and more people. It's probably the busiest you've seen the tankard of eels. Um, Lots of people in here, and people are kind of coming in and hearing some things and then popping out. They're not, like, staying and buying anything, a lot of them. Some of them are. They're, they're sitting around. Your, your table has a reserved sign on it when you come down, Quill and Yip Yap, so you, do, you did happen to have that table. It is now officially your table. Um, and Avion, you sit down, and Mia brings you, brings you a drink and motions for you to, to get food whenever you want it. Osel, you are walking... And walking and walking, going through the city, um, just kind of looking around, and it's, it's, it's a good. You you have you have a good feeling. It's the first good feeling you've had in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost as if the darkness that occurred the night before has been completely cleansed by the sun this morning. Um, little voice. Not little. The voice pops into your head and says, It seems you have a different demeanor today. Am I wrong? Well, you're not. This, uh. We had the opportunity to lay down roots, and I've. I haven't had roots in a long time. And while, uh. This may not be the place I would choose, it's, it's become a home. And I, I. I have a good feeling about this. I too have a good feeling about this. In fact, I have a feeling you're going to see somebody soon. And pff, voice disappears. And about ten minutes later on your walk 
You're almost, you're almost to um, the armory. You're walking down and you hear, Master Osol, is that you, you young buck? And you see Ozak walk out. He's got a little, little girl by his side um, who is almost as tall as him at this point. And he says, I wasn't sure if you were still in town, but well, I figured you, with the way things went, you probably had a hand in it. Am I right? You, you would be right, my old friend. That's, uh, I'm glad to see that you came out of that unscathed and that you're, uh, you protected your young one. Well, and he, and he makes a fist as if he was holding his battle axe, and he says, had to use it. Didn't like it, but I had to use it. I'm sure I, I, I thought I heard a familiar sing of metal and uh, battle during the chaos. How have you been, old friend? I'm enjoying my life. I know it's only been a few days, but I feel like it's taken years off my my life. I feel like I'm younger. I'm, I have purpose again. It's I do feel revived. The light, the light within me is shining again. That's wonderful. Um, uh, makes me. Makes me happy to hear that you are doing well. Uh, we we certainly missed you. Has the light returned to you, young friend? I wouldn't say uh, the clouds have completely parted, but there, there's a beam of sunlight shining through. Come with me a moment. And he kind of like reaches up and claps you on the shoulder and, and steers you. He says, I have something for you. You and do. He, he takes you back to his his house, and it's a small, small little house. Um, simple wood door. It's got two little flower pots on the outside near the front door, with just like a couple of like tulips starting to come up now that it's spring. Um, there's some runes carved into the stone around the outside of the door, in in uh, dwarven. You have no idea what they, they say, but um, you do recognize them, obviously, as being his. And it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice little house. This really cool shade of, like, almost... It's not periwinkle, but it's like a purplish blue. Um, it, it matches, like, some of the other houses in that color scheme that the, the city is like. And he, and he opens the front door, and the little girl runs in, and... Um, he says, just, just wait here a moment. I don't, I don't want her to see this. And he comes back out, and he pulls up like a burlap sack off, off his axe. And he looks at it, and he closes his eyes, and he puts his hand on it. And he reaches out, and he extends, and, he, and he's holding it out toward you. And he says, I <clears throat> believe you will have more use of this than I. Your axe, uh... I can't accept that. You, you need to protect your family. I have other ways of protecting my family, young one. I do not need this axe anymore. I believe... I believe there is something in it, though, that will protect you. I think you need this more than I at this point. He says, well, if you do not take it, I will be insulted. And as you know, you should not insult your elders. I... I would be honored to to wield your axe in battle and he kind of takes off his his, his uh, glaive and he s snaps it over you know the, the pull over his his uh his knee and just hands him the end of it and says for for memories and and to remember me by if if this shall be the last we see each other um gave me yours and i i believe you i won't have any need for this anymore so I would, I would love a, uh, a keepsake in your home to remember me by. Says, laddie, that was a, that was a fine weapon. I hate to see it broken. I understand why you did what you did, though. 
Should you need it, you can return, and it will be here, repaired, the next time you shall be here. Well, I had to give you some kind of work to keep you busy. Any any kind of, uh, Oso kind of looks down at the little girl and, and pats her on the back and says, uh, you, you keep him busy, all right? And, she's, and she just looks up and she goes, you're tall. I yeah, like I guess you, you're not. Though. I guess you're not used to that, huh? Well, I mean, there's tall people here, but you're really tall. And, like, you're an Azimar, so you are, like, you're a beautiful person. Mm. Like, you have very distinct features. Like, people just, they stare at you. So she's just, like, like just in <laughs> awe at, at your beauty. Um, I, I reach down and pick her up and kind of hold her and I say, all right, you you take care of your daddy, all right? He he means a lot to me. And, and I'm going to trust you. To keep take care of him, okay? She's, oh, I'll take care of him like he takes care of me. And she like, like tries to squirm out of your arms to get to him. And as you like give her back, she just wraps herself around him like she is absolutely in love with him. Um, well, and he, and well, he puts, and he puts her down and he looks back at you. Well, old friend, I know you're in good hands, and while I do miss having you around, it's, uh, it's nice to know that you're warms my heart to know that you are serving your purpose that you are here for so I reach down and extend my hand and say uh, until the next time we meet and he, and he clasps your hand and says laddie go on with whatever you're doing know that I'm here and I'm happy Grandpa Ozak will still be Grandpa Ozak Come find me if you need me. If things get bad, I'm always here to help. And uh, come on up to Delthorn's old place. We're opening a, uh, a bed and breakfast. Uh, perhaps you can uh, join us for a drink when we come back. Laddie, I will take you up on that deal. And uh, as o- Osel kind of leaves, he runs his hands over the stone, the runes on the stone, just kind of as a, a final farewell before exiting. Um. Yeah, so you you do that and you feel you just feel a warmth come over you. It's just like it's like a calming presence. And as you walk away, he he just calls out, "Laddie, do good," and he goes back into his place. You continue down. Um, you get to the armor. It's maybe only five minutes away. Anything you'd like to do specifically in there? You're looking for. Uh. I would go to him and say, um, is there any way, I, I would ask him, uh, good morning, I just wanted to see if you could uh, help me with something. Oh, uh, yeah, what you, what you looking for here? I, I hand the battle axe to him and I say, just, I want this battle axe to be in pristine condition. I want you to make it like new. And <laughs> Not much I'm going to have to do to this. Uh, two silver? Sounds good. I hand him. I hand him three silver. Thank you for your trouble. No, okay. And he like, I'll pick it up later. Yeah, I'll I'll come back and grab it once you're done. Okay. This is. I don't know why you're paying me to do this. This thing's in pretty good shape. But... It's important. It's important to me. Okay. Not a problem. And you you head back then. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah. Again, you've got like a solid forty minute walk, um, but it's beautiful and you're happy. Um, so the rest of you realize that oh, Osel, did you tell anybody that you were leaving? No. Okay. So you guys are all sitting there, and you realize that Osel is nowhere to be found. Well, I'm I'm kind of freaking out about Osel being gone um, because he's the one who's supposed to be taking care of the amber, and uh, so I'm gonna just start asking well, around. Delthrin hasn't given it to him yet. Delthorne yeah. still, still has it. But he'll be the one who has right. to handle it. I'm not sure. touching it. Okay. Um, I see what you're saying. And so um, I'm just going to ask, um, like, obviously Mia doesn't know where it is, where he is, and um, I'm going to ask Yip Yap if he's seen him. I don't remember if I saw him. You did Yeah, I didn't. So I said, no, no, Rolf, Rolf didn't see him this morning. Rolf's been busy. Okay. Um, I mean... I'm, I'm worried about finding him, but uh, I'm going to go out 
of the bar and just kind of look up and down the street. I have no idea where to look. So I'm just kind of out front of the tavern looking. You're looking yes. around, looking around, and after, I mean, it's probably been, like, you, you sat there probably for a solid 20, 30 minutes eating before you realized, shit, where's Osul? Um, and then 10 minutes, you sit there and you go outside, and as you're doing that, yeah, he's, he's on his way back. You see him, you see him approaching. And I just look at him and say, couldn't have left a note, let us know. You know, everything's okay. You didn't, nobody body snatched you last night. Um, well, we dispatched all the zombies, so I figured it was okay if I left for a minute. All right. Well, just leave a note next time. I, I, I'll leave it right on the shark. How about that? I'll, be our, I'll, I'll write on its gills where I've gone. That's our bulletin board is the shark. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> all right. So, so, yeah, you guys go back in. All right, I'm just going to sit back down with my plate of food and just ask him where he went, you know. Um. Well, I, I, I took a walk, and I, since we are on the eve of uh, some point leaving here, I, 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 I wanted to have something to remember our comrade Ozak by. It, it was... Calm, it was a, a somewhat calming uh, sensation to me that I, I he was within earshot, and you know he he could come help us if need be. But if we are going to be leaving shortly, that won't be the case. So I uh, walked down to an armor with the intent of purchasing a an axe, and happened to run into the old fellow, and uh, he gifted me his battle axe. So it is currently at the armor, getting in tip-top shape so that it can serve me and us the best it can and serve as a reminder of our of our comrade did he ask about me yes he did he <laughs> he, he said uh that that quill he uh just keep an eye on him Osel. keep an eye on him and i said i would so be sure to know that uh he's thinking about all of us knew it so as you guys are having this conversation sitting there um, you, 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 you hear the door open and a familiar voice rings out it says hello friends <laughs> oh no <laughs> it is good to see you alive today I knew you would come out unscathed maybe a little bruise here or there but you look beautiful beautiful people Especially you, Master Oso, that beautiful face. I love it. So, my friend, Windovia, has told me that you might be doing something with her. Is this true? Your ears uh, serve you well. Yes, we are considering... Uh, we'll be heading out with her once we are ready. How long will it be before you are ready? A day, two days? Ask her, it's up to her. It is not up to her, my friend. It is up to me. For you will be on my ship. Oh, God. Ah, okay. And just this big, <laughs> big grin comes over his face. Captain Sensu, at your service. And he just takes this deep, deep bow. I'm ready to go after this plate of food. <laughs> so. Since when did anyone put you in charge of a ship? Oh, you know, I am the captain. I have been captain for many years. Yeah, loosely. What do you mean, loosely? I have my ship. There's all... I run my crew. We do our things. You repaired my sails, did you not? I paid you. Yeah, out. but I just I distinctly remember there being uh, another man in charge at that point. What happened? Oh yeah, he was eaten by a shark. Good fortune favors me. That is why you should always be around me. Good things happen. You win sums of money for killing shark. I get captaincy. You are not dead. 
you should be happy you know me. Sensu never disappoints. Really? Really? What about the time we went treasure hunting, Sensu? I do not recall what you speak of. The time that our ship got capsized and we almost died? Nope. Does not ring a bell. I believe you are thinking of someone else. And he, like, goes up to the bar and, and goes to get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes back and he says, So, day after tomorrow or today? Either way, I am ready to go. Hey, hey, are you taking us to the ruins of Star Mantle? Strange man I've never met before. Mm, no. Okay, can you do that, though? Can we go there? For price, we can go there. Oh. I yeah. am being paid to take you somewhere else. Oh, where, where are we going? Oh, uh, we are going to the city of Westgate. Why? Because Windovia has paid me to take you to the city of Westgate. I do not ask any other questions. Rolf, why do you want to go to these ruins so bad? Um, because uh, there, there, it sounds interesting. And I'll look at, <laughs> I'll look at, I'll look at the guy I don't know and go. So you're looking at Sensu? Yeah. And he's looking down at you. Yes, Star Mantle is very interesting. Yeah, I've, very I've interesting. Sailed the past there many a times. Yes. And you see his hand carefully slip down near you, Rolf. Hey, don't don't touch Rolf the looter. I yes, you are a strange halfling. Yes, very strange. So yes, I am taking you not to the ruins of Star Mantle. All right, Rolf, I mean, why do you want to go there so bad? Just because you heard of it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sounds like a good place to go. You are a strange right. little one. I'm not sure about you. And Sensu is master of telling who is good and who is not. Yeah. My friend Avion, very good. Master Osul, very good. Very good. Master Quill, very hungry. But that means very good. But you, not sure about you. Yeah. Time will tell. How good are you at the sailing? Halflings do not normally appear to be masters on the ocean, the open oh. sea. Oh, no, not, not a good sailor. No, nah, I did not no. think so. You are very short. Very, yes, very short. You look very weak. Yes. Not good weapons. at reaching ropes. So day after tomorrow. Come to my ship, we set sail. Fair enough? Fair enough. So, he turns, walks out, typical Sensu style, in and out, like, very quickly. Um, on the way out, he's, like, shaking a couple people's hands, and, like, you see him, like, pointing back to a couple people, and, like, smiling, and... You can't quite hear it, but he's having a conversation like over three people um, with somebody else, and like you see him do this sign, <laughs> and then he walks out. That man's gonna get us killed out there. Probably. We seem so nonchalant about being killed. Um, I, I, I feel like we'll be we'll be okay. I feel like fortune favors us, so. We'll, Does we'll be it fine. though? Does it though? We're all sitting here together. You apparently found your love. We've made money. We just got a, a new house to do whatever we want. I'm feeling like we're on the on the good side of this. So, and I got to see some beetles this morning, and I just started describing the beetle that I found and how its its breeding process goes, and um, and that's about it. And in the middle of this riveting discussion of the difference between, like, the ladybug, the cricket, and um, this very, very strange beetle. Uh, it's like a dung beetle, but it's totally different. Um, 
Windovia walks up and she sits down. She takes a chair and actually turns it around, plants it, like straddles it, puts her arms up on the, uh, on the back of it and looks at all of you at the table and she says, so, I'm guessing Sensu has come by, yes? He did, yes. And where did he tell you that he was supposed to take you? I think Rolf knows. The ruins of Star Mantle. Interesting. I did not mention that to him. Um, I mentioned the city of Westgate. But very interesting, Master Yip Yap, correct? Rolf the Looter. Ah, yes, Rolf the Looter. Forgive me. And she leans in a little bit more and she says, So, it has come to my attention that there is something going down in the capital. And the capital being Sembia. Er, I'm sorry, Suzanne. She says, You can continue to Westgate if you like. We have a something that we need your help with there. But we also have something we may need your help with in Suzanne. <coughs> can you describe either one? Like, what, 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 if, are we facing something? Are we searching for something? Two things are happening in Suzanne. We have, we have learned, I have learned, and has been confirmed, that the Zents have been uh, not bought, but hired, we'll say hired, by the Shipbuilders Guild in Suzale to steal plans from the shipbuilders here in Marsember. Apparently they have successfully gotten some plans and have taken them back. Um, we do not know to what end they wanted these plans. Marsember, while they have a navy, typically build ships for commercial purposes, uh, transportation. This is the city of spices. So we are not sure what their, their plans are, what they're doing there. So that is Suzanne. In Westgate, we have rumors that there is, in fact, a shard of amber and that it is about to hit the open market for the highest bidder. So, I leave it up to you. If you would like to continue with me and earn my trust, as I will earn yours, to do good, make your choice. I will accompany you to either place. Oh, so? We can't let a shard of amber get out of the open market that's just we can't let that happen i i say we go track that down and try and capture it before it gets in the wrong hands rough one shiny yeah we have to get shiny centaurum after shinies avion as much as i don't want to spend any time with sensu on the open water i think the shiny is the best bet right now Shiny always the best bet. I agree with Rolf. We must get the shiny. And she says, then you have made your decision. The day after tomorrow, we set sail. We'll be at the docks. You know where Sensu's boat is, Avion. And it is, if they're no longer, auctioning. it is no longer a boat, it is a ship. Yes, Master Quill. If they're auctioning, do you know how we would procure... I mean, we've got some gold. We don't have a ton. I have only heard rumors from my agents that say they have heard second, third-hand information about a sliver being sold, potentially. Okay. Are you any of you familiar with Westgate? I am oh, not. Yeah. No. Quill, Quill and also you probably aren't. Yep, yep, you're not. Avion, you would be the closest if you want to roll um, history. Sure, let's give it a shot. <laughs> I've been rolling so well today. Yep. There you go. No, you've, you've heard of it. You know that it is... It's not part of Cormier. 
um, it's outside of, of Cormier and Sambia. It is considered one of the uh, last free cities of um, one of the last free cities in this area. So yeah, that's really what you've got with it. Um, yeah, that's, that's really all you know. Um, so on that note, you guys are going to be heading to Westgate next. Um, we'll conclude tonight's episode there. Next time, you will hit the open seas with Sensu on your way to Westgate over the Dragon Mare. So thank you, everybody, tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Um, congratulations to... Uh, who won that? Uh, oh, who won the chance? Gildenstern. Yeah, Stern. Uh, yeah Gildenstern. Um, congratulations on winning Shannon's giant dice chest and uh, dope. remember that tomorrow night is chronicles of peril with sean at 7 30 um no macolite wednesdays tonight or this week and then back again on um sunday we'll have the dragon uh water deep dragon heist uh going back on with with mm -hmm. steve and crew so thanks to everybody again shannon happy birthday yeah uh, happy birthday uh, thanks y'all <laughs> You got it's Mia, been, you got uh, Mia it's back. It's been such a good one. You got Mia back. Um, I did. And thanks everybody for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. So we'll, Hi guys. Uh, thanks we'll, everybody. We'll launch a raid here and see you soon. Night dinner.